Can you say tonight that political violence is never acceptable? Well, of course that's right. And of course, I'm the one that had very little of it. The new narrative they have, as you know, is I'm going to be a dictator. That's going to be the new narrative. No, no. I am not going to be a dictator. I'm going to manage like we did. I'm not going to have time for retribution. We're going to make this country so successful again. I'm not going to have time for retribution. And, and remember this, our ultimate retribution is success. That was Donald Trump last night changing his tone on whether he would ever be a dictator in a second term, saying he, quote, doesn't have time for retribution. That's different than saying it's not a goal, by the way. Back with us, CNN political commentator and Spectrum News anchor Errol Lewis, CNN senior political commentator, former Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger, and former Republican strategist and pollster with all the poll numbers always, Lee Carter. Thank you guys very much for being here. Let's listen to a little bit more of that town hall where Trump had this exchange, asked a question about his position on abortion and certain laws, especially in Iowa, uh, with the Fox News host. Here it was. In this campaign, you've also blamed pro-lifers for some of the GOP losses around the country, and you've called heartbeat laws like Iowa's terrible. I'd like for you to reassure me that you can protect all life, every person's right to life, without compromise. You wouldn't be asking that question, even talking about the issue, because for 54 years, they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it, and I'm proud to have done it. Lee, he went on to say, though, at a different point, that he's four exceptions. He talked about life of the mother, incest. He talked about a lot of women don't know they're pregnant, he said, at five or six weeks. So trying to have it both ways there. He is trying to have it both ways because he knows there's a general election to come. And I think uh, it's going to be really hard to get into a Republican primary or, you know, to, to get Republican primary voters to let him go on this one. You saw that woman is saying, I'm not going to let it go because it is that important. But when it comes to general election, I think President Trump is right. He knows this is a losing issue for the Republican Party. There is no way around it. Um, seven in 10 independent women say that their primary reason they're going to go to the polls in states where it's really on the ballot is about abortion. Nine in 10 Democratic women say the number one issue that's going to drive them polls is abortion. Donald Trump knows this, and he knows he's got to come up with a reasonable solution. But he's not going to lay out what it is until he wins the nomination and has to move to the general election. And I think that's a strategy. Do you think that he actually has one? I do. I think he know. I think he very much knows that this is a losing issue for Republicans in the general election, and I think that's why he's. No, no, so I agree with that. I'm just saying that the actual solution itself that he's not going to lay out. Like, what is the solution? Well, I think he's going to come out in the general election and say that he'll do something about 15 weeks or something more along those lines, with the exceptions that he has outlined. That was very effective for Glenn Youngkin um, in Virginia. I mean, well, I think that's a hard enough. part, right? This is the issue, and I think to, the reason why I paused in, in your open that these are different words or different framing of things is, you know, the first thing the Biden campaign sent out last night was the back half of that comment saying, I'm proud to have done it when it came to helping to strike down Roe well, versus Wade. The changing or softening on dictator or retribution, like, he's going to do this thing that he did in 2016 where he says a thing and then says another thing that's diametrically opposed to it and then claims that he does, didn't say the other thing. Like, I don't know, he's got a record now. This is what, and see, this is what the, the and it's a tough job for the media to hold him accountable because it's the fire hose okay, of misinformation. I know, you guys are like, <laughs> But it's the fire hose of misinformation, right, where on the one hand he can say he would negotiate the Civil War and would get an answer that on the same time he and he throws all these things out that it's like where do we address he said this this was a lie the one time and then this time he and so it ends up where fox news then just kind of smiles and says please have a town hall and just say whatever you'd like and go ahead and remake your image but we know who he is and so i think this this general election is going to be a lot more difficult for him than it would be today i think today he'd win honestly which is a frightening thing for me but it, but I, I think if you look at it He's he's going to be shown to be a victim, a complainer. America is just exhausted of the complaining. Honestly, the 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 tired, like it, it's exhausting, and I think that's going to be pointed out. And this abortion issue, I actually think his answer was pretty good for a pro-life president on that. You've got to be sensitive, and Which I thought. Answer? Well, I mean, if, if you're thing. saying basically like, yeah, exactly, this is a good it's point. A but I think the answer, if you can come out and say like 15 weeks and I'm for certain exceptions, that's what pre that's what Republican presidents you know, used to be for. You know what's interesting? To a point you were making, Lee, earlier, all three of them, so whether it's Trump, what's he really for on abortion, right. or whether it's the two candidates on the stage last night, what reason did you give everyone to vote for you? Not just against the other person, right. for right. you. 
that's universal among all three of them, interestingly. Yeah, well, you know, what's interesting, I, I thought, look, the Donald Trump town hall, uh, he showed that he does have discipline. We're used to him doing and saying a lot of crazy things. <clears throat> that wasn't the Donald Trump who showed up last night. He was disciplined, he was somewhat reasonable, he was strategic. He's, he reverted back to being like sort of the, the commercial Donald Trump, the, uh, the, the salesman, the person who's gonna try and close a deal. Um, and that is going to be where he, on abortion, I think, says, look, I put in the justices who overturned Roe versus Wade, now I'm going to backtrack. So you can pick wherever on the spectrum you want to land, but let's put together something that will work politically so that we don't have a bunch of independent women come out and vote against us in November. This is somebody who's really focused on trying to sort of, you know, win an election. Okay. And and the, the Democrats are going to have to try and figure out something because I think you're exactly right. He's, do, he's, he's doing surprisingly well, in part by staying out of the spotlight, talking to his base, galvanizing his base, and trying to line up the issues that he thinks he's going to win on. I think he's also running on something. He's given people a reason that says, I'm a fighter. I'm the one that's going to fight for you against all the unfairness in the system. And that's something that really resonates. 68% of Republicans say that they want a fighter. So on the style of it, maybe not the specific issue, specific he does, specifics. He does talk about being the fighter. I'm here to fight yeah. for you. They're coming after you. I'm going to fight back. And that's the message 68% of Republicans want to hear.